Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And since we're both here, I figured it was a really good time to ask Alex a question about a subject that he is pretty familiar with, especially way more familiar than me. Of course, that we could say that about almost everything, right? We'll pretend that I'm more knowledgeable. Good, let's do that. So, I uh, wanted to talk to you about a game I recently played that leads me to think a little bit about the world of Warhammer. Uh, and it was Inquisitor Martyr, and for those who have not played the game... Well, actually, do you want to tell people the general concept of Inquisitor Martyr? The, it's an ARPG in the veins of Diablo and, like, Fortunately, Path of Exile and Grim Dawn, mm. except set in the Grim Dark of the forty-first millennium in Warhammer. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's kind of like a Diablo two with guns. We've talked about it on our live streams a little bit. We've talked about it once or twice, I'm sure. On the show. It's a fairly fun game if you like that kind of thing: dungeon crawling, mission based combat stuff. The one thing that really like immediately when I started playing it, I I drew comparisons to Diablo. Uh... Something that was different than Diablo and I guns. Well, there's that. Yes, <laughs> but from the from the gun part also comes another system that you really wouldn't do in melee combat, which is cover. I kind of figured that one of the reasons they used cover in this particular game was because of the origins of Warhammer in general, coming from the war gaming aspect, and you know where you have to get out your rulers and everything like that. I saw you yeah. play that. I've, I've you, seen you have. I haven't played. I haven't played tabletop Warhammer in like a decade. It's it's very detail oriented. If you're not very familiar with Warhammer, I have. I don't gaming. have the money or patience or time to dedicate to learning a new rulebook again. So that that's true. For for those who are completely unaware of it, it this is where all the miniatures come in too. Y yes. Yeah. See, as you were saying, you're pretty sure that the cover system comes from the tabletop, mm. and I believe that's probably true. Um, as most of the Warhammer 40k strategy games out there, like Dawn of War, for instance, they all have some sort of cover mechanic. Yeah. Whether it's an active cover like the one in Martyr, where you hold, like, space bar to get in cover, or if it's a passive cover like in Dawn of War, where you get your units in the cover and they kind of just get a defensive bonus, mm -hmm. there's, there's usually some sort of cover mechanic there, and I'm sure it stems from the fact that the tabletop game has a whole cover mechanic based on partial three-quarters cover, half cover uh, for vehicles and for units, mm -hmm. uh, and what can be in cover and what's too big to, to get benefits from cover. So it's something that the tabletop game actually goes into a, a huge detail about because cover is very important there. Or if you don't want your guys getting shot to all hell and killed in one round, right. cover becomes uh, a necessity to hold make sure your troops last a bit long. Or right. to make sure your tanks can hide and just have their turret out and have as little of the body of the tank <laughs> in firing range and unable yeah. and obscured, so it just makes it hard to shoot. Right. But when you take it to a video game, it sometimes isn't as great. Right. And like in, in the in the tabletop version of this too, because I wanted to talk a little bit about cover and mechanics, uh really because the, the whole idea is, how does cover actually function? What does it really do for your character? How does it mitigate damage in the, the tabletop game? Because, like, a lot of people may not even r realize this, because I don't know how many people typically use it, but, like, in D&D, &D, there's also cover rules. And There is. And in the miniature game, it's actually used a lot more, because you're physically positioning um, your units behind the cover in order to do this. D and D, and if you play on the table, like with the, with miniatures as well, I'm sure that gets used a lot more than if you just play with theater of the mind. If you're playing like on a roll twenty and you have the the map out or something, or if you have one of those nice detailed miniature map things where you can put your characters on. But now, if I remember correctly, in D and D, cover basically adds to your AC, it, like it it adds to your armor class, so you're harder to hit. Right, and in this instance, in like Warhammer on the table, it doesn't add to your AC, it makes it harder to hit. Where this game is a dice pool, you're rolling all these dice, it makes it 
harder. It doesn't add to an AC because there's not an effective AC there. It makes, I don't know about the new additions, but it makes it harder to hit. And I don't remember exactly how it functions because I haven't played Warhammer again in 10 years. And I know that, like, uh, when I'm playing uh, 1879, there's, like, a, a shield, you know, spell. It doesn't make you harder to hit, but it does mitigate an amount of damage. So you're, you're absorbing an amount of damage. So I'm sure that there are different cover mechanics depending on what you're, what you're looking at. Um, oh, definitely. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, are you just trying to mitigate the damage that you know you're going to take, or are you trying to make it harder to actually hit in the first place? It's kind of like the difference between... Uh, you know, do I want to have high health, or do I want to be able to dodge bullets like I'm in the Matrix, you know? Right. <laughs> do you want a face tank, or do you want to be an invasion tank and not get hit? Right. I don't know if you were aware of this, but, like, in Uncharted, the video game... Yeah, I know you've, you've never played the Uncharted series, but... Uh, but, uh, Nathan Drake... Uh, there's that whole thing where it doesn't feel very realistic. Everybody's shooting him, and it takes a long time for him to actually, uh, you know, die before before that. And Naughty Dog actually it explained that it's not actually that he's taking damage. It's that when the bullets are, like, coming near him, um, it is bringing him closer to running out of luck. So technically he's dodging those bullets. Right. And it's right. just that last really one that actually that gets him. Yeah. I think uh, Game Maker's Toolkit, I believe, went over that as well. Yes, yes, I believe that's where I had heard it. Um, so in that kind of respect, it's almost like your character is technically dodging because they only have like one hit point. So they're, they're just really good at dodging bullets. I mean, w Warhammer, they, they don't technically have one hit point. They have armor, so... Oh no, no! And even in that game, they they don't technically have one hit point because they have to they have to keep bringing it closer and closer. You can't just have a percentage where all of a sudden, uh, oh, oopsie doodle, you got hit. I mean, to be fair, Warhammer, yes, some units actually have one wound, and so if you fail your armor save, as in your armor does not stop the attack, yeah, yeah, you get wounded, and then bad yeah. things happen. Yeah, yeah. you That's you are no longer there. Wounds and or hit points come into that effect mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Um. So on that note, when we're talking about Warhammer, I uh, I'm I'm playing Inquisitor Martyr, uh, and I'm I'm going through the game, and I realize that there's this cover mechanic, and it's in an ARPG. So you're supposed to be able to use it with shooting mechanics, get behind, you know, your chest high walls, or or you know, behind a doorway or anything, and uh, shoot at the the enemy from cover. And it's supposed to help mitigate damage and uh, keep you from getting overwhelmed and everything. But what I started to realize is that it really didn't feel like it needed to be used much at all. Like, it didn't feel like from a strategic aspect I saw much reason to, unless I was at really high levels for the opposition. Like, if there was a huge disparity, and I was trying to play, like, with five levels up, you know, enemies. Right. Uh, I, you know, from, from a typical standpoint, I, you, I could pretty much just run and gun the, those whole levels without really bothering with cover altogether. And it, it made me feel like, and you would know better because um, you've been playing longer, you might know more about the history of the game. Um, it felt like they had kind of backed away from that system in Inquisitor Martyr. And, and they definitely did. Like, prior to 2.0, that was a lot heavier emphasis on cover. And the game played and felt like it played a lot differently than it does uh, mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So they had kind of taken and they were like, we wanted to be, I, I guess it was they wanted it to be more action packed and mm -hmm. less cover based shooter feel. Yeah. So they, they did change a lot. And I don't remember everything they changed because I had taken a break um, for a while because all the changes. Yeah. But they, they stepped away from that mechanic and it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get of a system completely once it's there mm. but you can step back from it and you can change how things function with it for instance. so right. as you said it's really not necessary anymore but there's still enchantments and a few passives you can take that will make it so that you get bonus as well in cover like to regeneration or damage bonuses. right 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 I, I guess the reason why i really started thinking about it when i was playing through that game and i realized that there was this whole cover and they they explain the cover system in detail too like you know what what it does and there's all of these little bonuses that you can get if you are in cover and if you're in certain states 
the the thing that got me really thinking about the the larger picture here is just that whole thing. Like I, I'm playing D and D, and when I was playing D and D, all of a sudden the whole thing of cover came up, and I think it came up like once or maybe twice in the entire time we were playing that campaign. Um, it it barely registered for the most part, and I keep thinking about how many systems we talk about and how rarely the idea of cover comes up, even though the systems might be in there. I just start wondering. Did they all collectively try to move away from it? what was it like a holdover from the old like chainmail days? And it really could be just like a holdover. You know, for the 40k stuff, it's generally a holdover, and it's not necessarily that it it's bad. It just doesn't really add anything to like an RPG type feel. Typically, um, right? I mean, cover can be thematic. It can be cinematic as well. Mm -hmm. Like you see a bunch of those um, Hollywood movies where it's or even um. Video games as well, shooters, you know, cover-based shooters where you you hide behind cover until there's a break in fire and you come out guns blazing and well, yeah. you go into town. But like in a fantasy RPG, I, I mean, most people aren't hiding behind cover. Even though like a wizard would be great pressed up behind cover, popping out and shooting a spell off and then popping back behind cover. Well, well, yeah, I think about how many games that like just action games that I play and, like, Red Dead Redemption 2, there was a whole cover system. There wasn't the first one, too. Uh, Mass Effect, that that whole game had it in it. Um, Last of Us, they just had the second part come out. They, they use it. There's a lot of games that do, but you start to realize that if they have an over-reliance on it, it starts to feel incredibly slow and not well-paced. So they, and, and that's the thing there, yeah. Yeah, so what they try to do, and you see it more and more, Uncharted, I mentioned earlier, that's another one that does it. But they they kind of like try to destroy cover, so you have to keep moving, or they give you some kind of benefit to not be just holed up and camping behind this one, you know, concrete blockade <laughs> for right. the entire game. Um, they want you to, to to keep moving, and they want the action to keep going. I can imagine that if you're in a tabletop game where combat technically has to take more time to do every action that if you just have a character and they're behind a tree for the entire time <laughs> it's going to be incredibly uh, boring for everybody and it makes sense from a strategy standpoint that you'd want to hide behind cover in order to do mm -hmm. a firefight mm -hmm. melee you're not going to be using cover like at all There's, no and that's even a thing in warhammer it's melee units don't get the benefit of cover if they're in melee like oh shooting into melee you can you can still kind of do in warhammer you get massive negatives to shoot in a negative uh melee because you can hit your own guys mm. um i believe that's still a thing and for and D, D, you still get i believe negative shooting into melee you don't have specific perks or feats for it but typically it's if you're in melee uh you don't get a benefit of cover versus other melee units there's you can't be you're Face to face, sword to sword, axe to axe kind of deal. It's, it's a swirling melee of combat. Right. Um, and the cover is just like ignored completely. With the melee not getting the bonuses uh, for the cover, it feels like melee as a play style is nerfed in that system. Do they do anything to kind of like uh, rectify that? In which system? In, in Warhammer, it sounds like uh, a ranged combat is going to be a lot more effective because they can use that cover than the melee uh, combatants. I mean, honestly, currently in the game, uh, melee is super underpowered, comparatively, right. um, a lot of the guns. Mm. And part of that is the fact you can have the range, is the fact that you can not be right in the thick of combat, and you can be blasting away and doing whatever. Right. Um, they have been working to rebalance melee to make it more balanced and on par, which is good. It's definitely more fun than it used to be, that's for sure. Oh, that's good. I hear that that's something games strive to be. Balanced? No fun. fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, no, games are perfectly balanced, <laughs> as all things should be. Um, ah, yes. Yeah, uh, but no, that they're supposed to be fun at the end of the day, or why are you... Is it technically a game if you're not having fun with it? I don't really know. 
like you were building a system. Did the concept of cover come up when you were building any of your systems? Did you consider it as a mechanic? I don't think I had actually gotten into that specifically. Mm. Um, I was totally still working on the non-combat stuff as well. Like I had a bunch of combat skills and whatnot and, and magic stuff, but I didn't really have a lot of non-combat stuff figured out yet, even though cover is technically combat, but there's not really... Typically in the game, there's not really a skill set that goes into cover use, right. which actually could be really interesting if you had a tactical type of person who is adept at using, creating, and breaching cover, for instance. Oh, um, yeah. So basically you make the Kool-Aid man. Oh, uh, yeah! That's right. I'm going to make the Kool-Aid man as, as a unit. There you go. And <laughs> just bust through walls. <laughs> Sorry, your cover is compromised. Oh yeah, Fun. yeah. You get to pour a drink from your head, and then it's <laughs> just a lot of your enemies accumulating. Uh, <laughs> we don't like what what's it, what's in that Kool Aid? Oh, the blood of his enemies. Just in case <laughs> you'll Why never is that all right inside. I want the blood of his enemies. <laughs> that would explain yeah. so much. Next time you see that old commercial, folks, just just think of that. You're welcome. We ruined everyone's childhood. I was thinking, too, because when you were talking about, like, your system, too, it had, like, percentages and such, and it got me to thinking, like, could you even consider, like, your armor to be a form of cover? No, you don't consider armor cover. You're hiding inside your armor. Your armor's getting hit no matter what. Uh, yeah, but, you know, if I'm behind, uh, like, a, a tree, and the tree gets hit, same basic principle... Like, you know, it's just that the tree is thick enough that, you know, the, the you can't go through. The, yeah. The I mean, arrow. It's, I, I, like, it's a deflection thing, or at least it's a mitigation thing, but it's not directly... You're not, you're not wearing a tree. You, the tree typically will not move with you. Oh, but what if it could? I'm thinking tree armor. Not just tree. I'm thinking tree armor. Like, just, just cut out sections of the tree and just make a surround around you. And then you have, like, the log cabin uh, shield defense force, and nothing can hit you. you so Canada cover. defense force? The Canada defense force, exactly. <laughs> then I ride in on a moose. It's the most majestic thing ever. Don't hate us, Canada. Sounds Sorry. Right. Do you think the cover is a little antiquated, or could it be and interesting and fun again? I think currently the way people typically use cover is probably antiquated. Um, but I think there's definitely ways you could spruce it up and make it more fun again. There's ways you can make it more usable and, like, not just a set piece. Um, let's say you overturn a card of fruit. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You could potentially use the fruit as a distraction. Throw it at people and get it in their eyes. Pelt them with, pelt them with oranges and tomatoes. I mean, oh, that yeah. could be a way to do it and be interesting. Or you could have cover that you could set on fire. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Basically, you're saying if you could make the kinds of cover more dynamic in their usefulness, you know, it's not just I'm behind cover, but what kind of cover are you behind and how can you implement it as something interactable, not just a static thing? Right. And, and finding ways to interact with cover could be interesting and good for either story or tactical stuff. Um, oh, yeah. and I think that's the hard part there is integrating cover into being thematic and useful for a storytelling element. Right. I feel like that is harder to do. Mm. Well, you know what you could do, though? Imagine if you were, you know, going through the woods and a bunch of ring wraiths came by, and you were like, you ducked behind cover, and the, when you duck behind cover, oh, Frodo's there. Okay, well, now, now you actually did, like, inadvertently end up with the giant story thread because maybe you end up looping into what he's doing at the time. If right. we were talking about, like, a Lord of a Ring. But the idea that, like, maybe by ducking behind cover, you uncover a character or a message or some kind of, like, maybe with an investigation check or something like that, too, while you're there. You hop behind cover, and then as you do, you stumble upon a clue to the mystery you're working on. Yeah, there's a symbol on, uh, yeah, on, on that barricade, and you're wondering and what that symbol is. Yeah, and you notice it, and you, it quirks your, it piques your interest for a moment, but that'll be lost again in the swirl of the combat, I assume, until you're done with the combat scenario. Right, and then maybe you want to go back, you want to look into that a little bit further. Maybe it's a mysterious right. or, symbol. Yeah. 
Or maybe as you're doing that and you get a chance to see it, the cover gets destroyed and you no longer have that clue, but now you've got this thing in your head that you need to look for. Yeah, and how well do you remember it? And if you remember it well enough, can you go and research it further? Right, yeah. and that would always uh, add some thickness to the plot of that. Right, and it would actually uh, give a, a GM uh, something to really work with instead of just saying, all right, well, you duck behind a thing. You know, maybe you could implement it as a way to uh, create something that helps, you know, drive a plot forward or drive a subplot forward. Um, it's those uh, Indiana Jones things where he kind of hides behind something and finds a room. Yeah. Or some secret message that he never would have found otherwise. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You you duck into, like, the horse cart. You find that it's full of letters, and they all have imperial seals on them or something like that. And you're like, oh, what's that about? Right, or you hide Marcus Brody in the uh, shop, but it ends up being a cart, and the Nazis take him off. There you go. Yeah, I feel like combat, usually when people are playing, they want it to be very fast, and they want it to feel, like, very you know, action-oriented, and cover feels like it runs counterintuitive to that, but maybe maybe you can, like we're talking about right now, make it more interactive so that it, it doesn't feel static, like the barricades themselves. There's something to consider, folks, that cover is not the enemy. Fish are friends. Cover is friends, not food. Cover is friends, not food. It's probably better not to read too much into the fish are friends, not food reference from Finding Nemo that we used at the end of the episode. I really have no idea what that has to do with cover. Oh, well, actually, the clownfish needed to use the cover of the anemones. You know what? Probably better if we don't think about it too much. Anyway, uh, this episode actually is going to lead directly into the next episode where we end up talking about uh, what happens when you have a system that doesn't really work for you anymore, and what can you do to either fix it or mitigate it in some way, because cover is sort of like that in a lot of the systems that we were talking about. So look forward to that. In the meantime, though, you can always go over to delvecast.com and find all of the stuff that we do over there. While you are there, maybe check on our Patreon link, because you can find a couple unlocked episodes of Tales of the Mirror Stone right now. A couple more will be released, uh, unlocked to the, to the general public over the next uh, couple weeks during this month. Uh, if you are a patron to our website, though, you can actually listen to the whole thing right now. This is that one shot that Alex did with Bo and David, and it's been kind of sitting on the proverbial shelf for me for a while, and we finally got around to releasing it. If you want to listen to that one shot uh, live play of D&D that they did with high-level characters on, like, a heist mission, uh, it's it's fun, folks. Uh, consider looking into that. And as always, you can find this show on every platform known to mankind, including Apple, iTunes, podcasts, that thing. Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, we're all over the place. And thank you to our Shining Level patrons, by the way, who help make this content possible. Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick, you're all stars. That's why you're shiny, because you're stars. See why we called it that? That's my retconned answer. It, uh, it's not just because, you know, shine gets. Anywho, make sure to follow us on social media as well. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. Until next time, thank you for joining us on Delve, a show about mechanics. We think, pretty sure, yes, mechanics are friends, not food. Oh. I did it again. Bye, everybody.